as always, we pass around the pictures, so we're going to pass around uh, pictures of the Ablo Kedisvara, whom uh, this chant is an homage to, a dedication, invocation to, and from here I will pass to Lama Tashi, who will give us some teachings on sound, compassion, and the meaning of this chant. And then we will basically, I'll teach you a little melody that I sort of made up for this. Good evening. <clears throat> uh, when we talk about practice, development, improvement in ourselves, uh, from the Buddhist point of view, it is not like <clears throat> that someone out there will bless you and transform into uh, something, someone special. It is that we have to do it through our own uh, hard working practice and so on. <clears throat> so this is one of the Buddhist uh, viewpoint that when we talk about enlightenment, enlightenment, Buddhahood, or Bodhisattva achieving the higher quality, uh, it also involves uh, your or our own hard working and our practice. And that's how we develop ourselves and achieve the higher realization, uh, <clears throat> achieve the enlightenment or without. So now when we talk about this mantra, Om Mani, that actually should be Padma, to usually Peme, that's what, how we pronounce it, Hum. This is actually a Sanskrit word, and this is a mantra of Avalokiteshvara. And Avalokiteshvara is embodiment of the compassion of all Buddhas. Here, <clears throat> when we talk about the uh, embodiment of the compassion of all Buddhas, definitely sometimes we find a little confusing. Uh, many different Buddhas, like Buddha, Medicine Buddha, Buddha, Buddha Amitayus, all those, and Buddha Shakyamuni, uh, when we talk about the embodiment of their compassion, it is what uh, Buddhists believe. When we achieve enlightenment, it is like the different rivers <coughs> finally uh, meet at ocean. So we are when we are a sentence being, we are different uh, uh, beings, different identity. But when you achieve the Buddhahood, all become like oneness, are inseparable just for the purpose of showing different activities. They can be in different form, but in reality, the, all the Buddhas are same or one. So that's what uh, belief is. That's why when we talk about the embodiment of the compassion of all the Buddhas, <coughs> this is what we call Avalokiteshvara. And in Tibetan, uh, we call Chen Rezik. So Chen, if you literally translate it, Chen means eyes, and Chen Rezik means kind of looking at someone without closing even, someone out of compassion, with out of love, looking to all the sentence being, without even uh, taking any break, kind of constantly looking at you. So this is what the Avalokiteshvara is, that out of compassion it is always wants all beings to be happy, uh, free from the suffering, uh, with the happiness all the time. So this is what the um, uh, symbolic or the actual uh, entity of Avalokiteshvara now the mantra, Om Mani Padme Hum, 
literally, if we translate, Om actually is the mantra uh, that is composed, or the word that is composed of three words. <coughs> A-O-MA, so kind of A, and then you have vowel O, and then a suffix M, OM. So this uh, three word symbolize the three, uh, what do you call uh, doors, three doors of ourself. Now when we talk about door, we call it door because whenever we engage with something, if you want to do something, there are three ways, three gates to do the work or the, do, the, uh, do the action. It is body, mind, and speech. If you insult someone, either by using your word, that is speech, and definitely you have a negative intention, that's the mind. And then if you want to hurt, harm someone or help someone, either you use your hand or your foot, you know, if you do bad, you kick someone, then you will use your foot. If you want to help someone lifting uh, from the ground, if someone fall in, then definitely you will use your hand. That is where you use your body. So whatever you do, you will have to do either body or speech or mind. Without going through one of those, you cannot do anything. So either it's a, a good karma or it's a bad, but you will be doing it those three gates. So that's why it's called three doors or three gates of us, that is body, speech, and mind. So this Aoma symbolizes these three, body, speech, and mind. Now, again, when we talk about these three gates or three doors, it has two different kinds. One, when we are as a uh, ordinary human, ordinary being, our body, speech, and mind can be diluted, impured. But when we achieve the Buddhahood, enlightenment, that is when we will find our body a pure one, our mind a pure one, our speech a pure mind, a pure speech. So there are now you can say like impure body, speech, and mind, and pure speech, a uh, pure body, speech, and mind. Two, di two different categories. Now, if we want ourselves to be a pure and perfect, that means we have to make our body, speech, and mind a perfect, pure one. Until and unless we have pure body, pure mind, and pure speech, we are not pure. <laughs> like, you know, sometimes out of anger we use negative words, that means our speech is not pure. And then we have negative in intention. That means our mind is not pure. And sometimes we do bad with our body. Again, uh, our body is not pure. Now when it will be pure? Pure. That is, <clears throat> after practicing, kind of reducing the negative actions, not letting our body to do anything negative things, anything negative. And then same thing, not letting our speech to say or express any negative words, and then, and then not letting our mind to think anything negative, like negative intention, harmful intention, whatever. So if we practice, then there is chance that we can purify our body, speech, and mind. That if we can do it, then we will finally have pure body, pure speech, and pure mind. That is what we believe. That is the final attainment or achievement, which is also called the three kayas in Sanskrit, the three uh, bodies of uh, Buddhas. Buddha has, when you achieve the Buddhahood, enlightened. When you become an enlightened being, then you will have all those pure body, pure speech, and pure mind. Now, how can we 
transform our impure body, speech, and mind into pure body, speech, and mind. That is what the Omani and Bhame comes to. So Mani, it says that uh, for the Om, which uh, represent body, speech, and mind, both pure and impure, now it says that to transform the impure body, speech, and mind into pure body, speech, and mind, we need the practice of Mani and Peme, and whom stands for inseparable oneness. So if we practice Mani and uh, Padma or Peme together, inseparably, then we will definitely have, uh, we will be able to transform our body, speech, and mind into a pure one. So now what is Mani? What is Peme? Mani, Mani is a Sanskrit word for jewel. Now, external jewels, we have diamonds, gold, expensive things. We call them jewels because that's worth a lot. That if you have a small piece of it, that can solve lots of your uh, financial difficulties. So that's an external jewel. Now, what is internal jewel? Internal jewel is love and compassion. So, Marni stands for uh, internal, externally, definitely jewels, ordinary jewel, but internally, that's love and compassion. Why is that? Because, <clears throat> you see, if we are receiving uh, love and compassion from someone, that means we are safe. Like when we are a child, we are incapable of walking, moving, anything, but the love and compassion of parents <clears throat> brought us up to a capable person. So if the parents doesn't have love and compassion, then we might have been dead way back. How do we survive? In that stage, when we are completely incapable of doing good things, but we still survived because of love and compassion of our parents and our relatives, whoever. So that compassion and love is even more powerful than diamond or gold or other jewel, jewels. So that's why the real jewel is compassion and love. So this is the, what the money stands for, or money. Now, if you have compassion and love, can you purify yourself, your body, speech, and mind just, of, just with the compassion and love? It says, no, you have to have pet, peme, Padma. Padma is actually, the Sanskrit word, actually Padma, but now it's uh, pronounced Peme. So Padma is lotus. So here the lotus, <clears throat> uh, what that lotus stands for, you might want to know. Usually lotus, it's a very beautiful flower, but where does it grow? It grows in a muddy, dirty water, muddy water, with mud in, in, from the mud. So if you think of uh, the environment from where it grows, it's not a very pure one, but the lotus ends up with, without stain, the stain of the mud and dirty water. It's very pure and beautiful. So it says that we do have a wisdom within ourselves. Although we have impure body, impure speech, and impure mind, but we have inside ourselves, there is a wisdom that is capable of determining which is right and which is wrong. That is the wisdom. We have that wisdom that is capable of determining which is right and which is wrong. That is the most powerful uh, tool we have. With this tool, we can correct ourselves. When we make mistake, that tool, if we use it properly, then that will correct us. No, this is something wrong I am doing, so I shouldn't do it. And when we do something good, that tool will support us. Yes, this is right, I should do it. So that wisdom is symbolized by uh, Peme, Padma, Lotus. So as the Lotus, 
itself grows from a muddy water, but without the stain of mud or dirty water. Same thing, that wisdom, although it grows in uh, ourselves, although we are possessed with like uh, impure body, speech, and mind, but that wisdom by itself is one of the purest one that will really guide us or transform our body, speech, and uh, mind into a pure one. So that practice of love and compassion at one side and practice of wisdom, uh, realizing the truth, wisdom that determines the reality. So that two parts, uh, many times it is says that it is like two wings of a bird. Bird can fly if it has, it has two wings, just one wing you cannot fly. Same thing, just compassion, you cannot purify yourself. Just wisdom, you cannot purify. So to purify your body, speech, and mind into, uh, uh, purify your body, speech, and mind, you need the practice of compassion and love plus wisdom, realizing the truth, inseparably. Yes, those has in union. Those has to go together to purify ourselves. That is the meaning, literal meaning of the mantra. With this practice, we can achieve uh, enlightenment. <laughs>